Welcome back to episode 2 of our bigger build series to build the Weasley clock. If you watched last time's video you saw us take apart the clock into various parts and this time we're going to show you how we went from the original clock face, which is this piece of aluminium here with black lettering on, it's very very thin, how we went from that and we replaced it with the new clock face. And the new clock face is actually laser etched onto some black acrylic with some brushed aluminium kind of plastic on the front. And we're going to show you how we designed that, all the process we went through, and then how we actually etched it out ready to put onto the clock. Let's get started. This is how I went about designing my clock face. I'm using Adobe Illustrator here, um, but you could happily use Inkscape, which is a free package, or any vector graphics package you're used to using. Um, as long as the software on your laser cutter can take either your file type or you can convert to one of the standard ones, then you can. So you can see here, this is my clock face designed, and I'll just talk you briefly through how I did it. So you can see the red outline here is where I want the laser cutter to actually cut all the way through the material, uh, and it exactly matches the original metal clock face. So the way I did that is I measured uh, the, the diameter of it, and I made a circle in Illustrator that exact diameter. But cutting off these bits at the right part, these straight bits, it was actually quite tricky to measure where they were, so instead what I did is I scanned using a normal photo scanner the original clock face, uh, and then I overlaid that in Illustrator and scaled it to match my, um, my vector drawing, and then I could easily cut off the right bits. So that was relatively simple. Uh, and then for the actual kind of words around the clock face, uh, I drew a circle and then Illustrator and other packages in Illustrator, it's here, um, you can get it to follow a curve, so you can write text and tell it to follow the curve all the way around. So it looks really difficult to do, but actually it's relatively simple. You can go and look up how to get text to follow a curve. I chose a font for the outside that was pretty similar to the original. I wrote all the things that I wanted in it. Uh, then also added um, from another font just a little a kind of character there that could ha serve as the kind of the bit that comes down to kind of show whereabouts that on the clock it is. And I did that on a, a slightly larger curve around the outside, the kind of tick, I guess, mark. And then on the original clock, it's got the maker's name. It's kind of in the center here, but I wanted it to kind of express what this clock is for. So it says, where's Brian? And you can see I've got two different colors going on here. The blue bits are just a guide showing me where the center is, but I've got red here and red here, and I've got black on all the other bits. And that's because on a, a laser um, cutter or a laser etcher, you can tell the laser cutter to do different things depending on the color of your lines. Uh, so here I've got the red line to be cut, and it will actually cut that hole and cut that outline, and the black line to be just etch. So in the laser cutter, when you're preparing your piece of work, you can tell the laser what to do with different colours. So on the red line to cut all the way through, on the black line to etch, but you can also set the, the power level, so how far down it would etch. I just needed it to take off the silver surface. So once that was done, the only thing I had to make sure to do to help the laser cutter is not to keep these as the original font. So in Illustrator, you can click on some text and do type convert, uh, create outlines, there we are. Sometimes it's called convert curves in other packages. And it just, rather than having the font and using the installed font on your machine, it turns them all into individual lines and, and circles and things so that your when you take it to the laser printer's computer, it doesn't have to have the font installed. So I did that for all of them. And then the last thing I did was to ungroup all of them because when you first convert them to curves, they're all grouped together. So I selected them all and ungrouped them all. And then it was ready for printing. So I just saved it as Illustrator file and that could open straight in the 3D, in the cutter. Uh, but depending on what package you've got, you might have to convert it to different uh, formats to work. But it was relatively straightforward. So the next step now we've got our design is actually to go and get it cut. I was really lucky to be able to go along to use the Norwich Hackspace, a friend of mine who goes there regularly. And so we went along to use this machine, which is their laser cutter. It was really helpful to have lots of people help. And if you ever get a chance to go to the Norwich Hackspace, definitely look it up and have a look. Uh, so I had some brilliant assistant from one of my friends, Paul, uh, and we kind of had a look initially at doing a test run. We were advised by one of the other guys there, Tim, uh, to try out a test print with just a few elements of the designs. So that's what we kind of did on the package that you can see on the screen at the moment. So what you have to kind of do is choose which bits you want to etch and what bits you want to cut. So we just chose some of the kind of fancy handwriting from the middle of the dial and one of the words uh, to try out. The next step was then to actually make sure that the cutter's ready to cut. And one of the things with that was to make sure that the focal length was right. So the, the laser was the right distance away from the material we're gonna cut so that it made a, a really good clean cut. So that's what we're doing here with a piece of kind of perspex, like a jig, lining it up on there, it was really helpful. 
Next step then was to put our material in and to kind of show where the printer would, where the cutter, sorry, would actually cut. So you can kind of do a test demo run. It would show you the area it would cut, make sure that actually was the size of my original clock face to make sure I had that right. Uh, and then we were on to do our test cut. Uh, and so that went relatively straightforward. You can see here, is it scanning across? Uh, we left the material that's kind of the um, plastic stick, sticky stuff over the top of the acrylic that we were cutting uh, on the advice of the people using the printer, just so it keeps it nice and clean, uh, but it still cuts straight through it. So you can see here, it's printing out our little test print. Uh, it does it actually really quickly. Um, I'm not a patient person and I've been using a 3D printer recently. This was a, a breath of fresh air. It does it in moments and it's cool to the touch immediately. Uh, and then we actually went on to do the real prints. You can see the real print here uh, going on on a larger piece. And you kind of see as it scans across cutting each line of the lettering. It was really fascinating to see how quickly it could do this. This isn't sped up at all. This is actually it doing it. Um, it, it made the room smell quite a lot of kind of burning plastic, which uh, was not necessarily popular, uh, but it was really fascinating to watch the printer at work here. So watching the outside cut was fascinating as well, because you can see it's running really, really quickly. It's not scanning across here, and you could see the intensity of the laser as it cut round. But it did a beautiful cut round the outside of both the kind of perfectly circular bits and the edges. Uh, and then we could just literally open it up uh, and take it straight out. It was immediately ready. It was a, a brilliant tool to be able to use. And if you've never had a chance to use one, I encourage you to go along to a hack space like the one in Norwich and try it out. But there's our clock face ready to use. So that's how we designed and cut and made our clock face. Thanks for watching. Come back for the next episode where we're going to show you kind of how we built our insides uh, with a servo motor and how we kind of connected that up to the clock dial. Thank you.